Caleb here, and I wanted to give a really cool success story of somebody who manifested something which felt like it was impossible, a client that I'm working with. And I also wanted to give in this video towards the end, after I explain the success, the story, I wanted to give a cool exercise you can use to start working through your fears. So before I do that, though, um, I just moved into my new place and the sound, there might be a little bit of an echo um, because I can hear it when I talk in this corner. So over the next two weeks, I'll get that figured out because I still have a lot of pictures to hang up and, um, you know, get everything set up. So I'll figure out the lighting and the sound within the next two weeks. So if you hear an echo in this video, it won't be there forever, you know, going forward. And I also wanted to give uh, a warning really quick. Please be very careful of the manifesting content that you consume online, especially on apps like TikTok, because TikTok is kind of the, you know, in app right now, it's the most popular phone app. Um, just please be very careful. There is a lot of predatory behavior um, in the manifesting community of, you know, supposed experts who are just going to tell you to persist and affirm and it's a mess. I, I've had, I've heard some horror stories recently from clients that I've worked with. So please be very careful of the content you consume. Um, manifesting is very much a blend of the psychological, the physiological, your nervous system responses, your body, the intellectual, the emotional, the spiritual. It's not just thinking and thoughts. So just be careful of what you consume, especially if it's starting to make you feel really bad and causing more resistance, okay? Okay, so here's the story. I have a client that I'm working with in my six-week program, and she, her circumstance that she was going through is her and the SP are sort of in a divorce, not quite all the way divorced, but it's in a process. And this is over in a different part of the world um, that handles divorces differently. This is, is not this is not in uh, uh, Western culture like in America. It's not in Western culture. So, essentially, what happened was her SP was trying to take her to court to get the marriage annulled, basically, and to basically just buy her silence and buy his way out of the marriage with money. So I want to talk about this when it comes with fears, because you guys always hear me talking about like, you know, accept your current reality, accept your current reality, right? Because when you hear the success of what she got, you may think, but didn't she, wasn't, weren't you helping her um, fight her current reality? And I want to explain why it didn't happen that way. So essentially, long story short, what happened was the court case got thrown out. The judge actually took her favor and her side and threw out the court case. Huge success for her. And this happened five weeks after we had our first session. So I wanna talk about this. So accepting your current reality, right? Always remember that your current reality leads to your outcome, no matter how far away it seems. So she fully accepted the way things looked right now, but she took it a step further. And let me explain this when it comes to fears. A lot of people don't realize that manifesting is full of lots of oxymorons and paradoxes. And the reason it is, is because a lot of people don't understand that you keep creating who you are. You don't, you don't keep manifesting what you want. You keep manifesting who you are. And manifesting can be a very humbling experience because who you have been in the past and who you are currently being when it comes to a subject you're struggling with are not the same person. And it's hard to accept that because our ego wants to say, no, I've really been thinking about this all the time. Thinking about something does not mean you are headed in the direction of it or creating it. And a lot of you know this because a lot of you have been struggling to manifest something for what seems like years. Clearly, there's more to manifesting than just logical thoughts, right? So the first thing that we did 
was we got her to actually dispel the energy behind the fears. Because you see, what a lot of people don't understand is that manifesting is energy and perception management. It's not one or the other. You must be able to manage the energy, the feelings, and the perceptions over that specific subject in order to manifest it. So let's explain why people fear their very fear. Have you heard that phrase, the only thing to fear is fear itself? Let's explain. The reason people fear things is because the fear is going to confirm something I'm already feeling and believing about myself, even if I'm not aware of it at the logical level, but at the subconscious level, that's what's going on. I don't want it to confirm one of my limited identities. So let me give you an actual example so you can understand this. Okay. So let's say you have somebody who has an abandonment wound, okay? And that person, one of their limited identities that they built is I'm abandoned. Now, let me give you a recap really quick on what an identity is, because essentially that's what manifesting is. It's what me and my friend Rochelle teach. Manifesting is identity shifting. All humans have multiple limited identities. It's just a fact of life. We build them and they get impressed into the subconscious, especially from very painful experiences as a child. A limited, a limited um, identity is a stuck energy, an emotional energy from an experience. And then there's a story that's layered on top of it. And so what happens is when a circumstance comes up in your life, a circumstance that triggers you, Remember, the circumstance actually isn't the source of your trigger. It's triggering what's already inside of you. This is what happens. Your brain looks at the circumstances and it does this. It goes, ooh, this circumstance and this emotional dysregulation match this past experience. So once again, your brain notices the circumstance and the emotional. Remember what I said manifesting is a blend of things? It notices the physiological experience going on within, right? The nervous system. So it notices the circumstance and it notices the physiological dysregulation. And then it pulls from its Rolodex of past experiences you're still holding on to. And it goes, ooh, this circumstance, this dysregulation match this past experience. And you end up embodying the very identity from that moment. In other words, the stuck energy and the story that's layered on top of it. So if you're someone who's manifesting something and let's just say you have spiraling thoughts, when your thoughts are spiraling out of control, don't worry about switching those thoughts into the opposite. When your thoughts are spiraling out of control, it's too late to change the level of thoughts. That's not what you need to get to the bottom to is flipping the thoughts. When your thoughts are spiraling out of control and you're feeling terrible, you need to ask yourself, what am I believing about myself in this moment to feel this way? And where did I learn to first believe this about myself? What identity am I operating from? Remember, all limited identities have their own sets of negative feelings, thoughts, and limited perceptions of self, the world, and others. So when you have negative thoughts that are spiraling, it's not about flipping the thoughts. You got to figure out what is the identity that you're operating from in the moment and start bringing awareness to it. Anyway, back to the fear thing. The reason so many people avoid their fears is because the brain is hardwired to keep you away from fear and pain and to get you into pleasure. So if a manifestation is associated with subconscious fears, you're going to find a way to self-sabotage and it's out of your logical awareness or to keep it away from you. So what I taught her to do, and here's the exercise that I want you guys to start doing. I taught her to do what uh, uh, an exercise that Vadim Zeeland called playing a negative slide. If any of you are not familiar with Vadim Zeeland, he is the one who wrote the book Reality Transurfing. He made Reality Transurfing popular in like the mainstream eye. He's a Russian author. 
Reality Transurfing is basically his explanation of what manifesting the law of attraction, the law of assumption are. It's just his version. So he often told people how to actually deal with fears is actually through acceptance He's because he's absolutely right. So this client, what I had her do was I had her play out the worst case possible scenario. The Dean Zealand calls it playing a negative slide, right? Like a slide on a projector. Just a five, 10 second scene, nothing long. And whatever the worst case scenario was for her uh, of the outcome with this court case. So she would play that scene, close her eyes, and she would immerse herself in that scene first person. And she would play that scene over and over again. But every time she played it, she would stop when she start to felt her body constrict, right? The physiological response showing her who she believed she really was, right? So she was, it was confirming one of the limited identities. So she was able to stop herself, right? And she was able to drop her awareness into her body, not up here, but in her body. And she was able to put her awareness on the energy and she imagined it as a certain color and just breathed it out. And then she played the scene again. So let's say you have a 10 second scene. Let's say the first five times she plays this negative slide, she only gets five seconds through before she feels the tensing of the energy. Okay, great, no worries. Then she revisits it the next day. Maybe she starts to get six seconds through. Essentially, this is what you wanna do. Whenever there's something that you fear happening. Remember, the reason you fear it happening is because it's going to confirm something about self. So remember earlier when I talked about the example with the person who has the abandonment wound? Let's, let's finish the rest of that example. When you are somebody who has, one of your limited identity is, identities is I am abandoned, right? What is that person doing in a typical relationship? Somebody with abandonment wounds. They become a people pleaser, right? I, I desperately fear this person leaving me because if they leave me, it'll confirm what I already feel and believe about myself. That's why they can't leave me. So that person becomes a people pleaser and then the SP ends up leaving, right? How many people have done that before in relationships, whether they were conscious manifestors or not? So that person, their job, for that example, isn't to avoid the fear of abandonment. It's actually to be able to work through and dispel the energy behind it. it, it it's so corny. We've all heard this phrase, but it really is true that the only thing to fear is fear itself. So this client, she was able to get clarity on what the worst case scenario with this court case was going to confirm about self, she was already subconsciously believing and feeling about herself. And she was able to start working on these limited identities and challenging them and letting them go as they came up. But it wasn't just that, she also was able to start dispelling the fear. So that's the exercise that I want you to start doing. First, ask yourself this question, why do I fear this potential outcome, right? This outcome you don't want to happen. Why do you fear it? What is it confirming about yourself? And where did you first learn to believe that, right? Start challenging that limited identity and those perceptions and learning to let it go. Then you, you want to actually start releasing the energy behind it. So pull up your negative scene, five, 10 seconds of the worst case scenario. And I want you to keep playing that scene. You don't have to do this all in one night. Do it over the period of like a week, right? So just give yourself time. Keep playing that negative scene. And the second you start to feel the emotional dysregulation or the physiological dysregulation in your body, stop the scene, drop your awareness into your body, so you know, your eyes close still. And just notice where you feel any sensations, tensing, itching, tingling, numbing, burning, something like that. Put your awareness on it and then imagine it as a certain color and then just let it go, right? Kind of breathe it out. Then get back into the scene. 
After about a week, she was able to get through the scene completely to the point where when she came out of it, her honest, genuine reaction, not a faked reaction, a genuine reaction was, if it happens, it happens. I mean, I'll still live a great life. That was pretty much her reaction. And this kind of goes along with what Neville Goddard talked about with circumstances. When you can learn to become indifferent towards your circumstances, that is when they will wither away. Not faked indifference, genuinely indifferent towards the circumstances. That is when they will wither away. And that's what happened with her. Now, um, she's still working on her manifestation, but I know she'll be a success story. I just already know it, like her full-on success. I mean, it was crazy. I had thought about her, and then maybe like two or three days later, she texted me. Because we were speaking every week or every two weeks. It just depended on how much time she wanted to do in between each of these six-week sessions. And I thought of her one day. And it was like two days later, she messaged me at like three in the morning when I'm asleep. Because she's on the other side of the world. And she said, you know, hi, Caleb. Something like that. Um, just wanted to let you know the court case got thrown out. Which she was so happy about. By the way... While we were also working on this stuff, because there was a lot of childhood stuff we were digging into, limited identities and all that stuff, she also manifested a brand new um, scooter, a brand new moped. It was really cool. Sent me a nice picture of it while this was all going on. So, yeah, I just wanted to make this video as my first video when I moved in here. Um, like I said, I'll get all the lighting and stuff and the sound figured out. But yeah, do this exercise to start working through your fears. Remember, the only reason you fear an outcome is because it's going to confirm something you already believe and feel about yourself at the subconscious level, whether you choose to logically believe or listen to me on that or not. Always remember, your body's going to show you who you believe you really are, the physiological responses in the nervous system. So get clarity on what it is, why you're trying to avoid this fear, right? What's the limited identity that's coming up and where you learned it? And learn to start meeting that identity, to start recognizing when it comes up throughout your day and just let it be there, have compassion for it, and then letting it go and challenging any perceptions that came up with it. But also do the exercise where you play the scene five or 10 seconds of the worst case scenario, and keep playing that scene until eventually you can get through it and your genuine reaction is, oh well, if it happens, it happens. Remember, you don't manifest what you want by avoiding your fears. Ironically, the more you try to avoid or prevent something from happening out here because it's gonna confirm something that you're already believing in here, the more you try to avoid your fears, the more you actually subconsciously start creating from them, which is why the person, for example, with the abandonment wound, the people pleaser ends up smothering their SP and the SP leaves. So if anybody is interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching or courses, I will leave those in the uh, description down below. Oh, also, I started a new TikTok. I'll post videos eventually soon, and I truly will post videos on it. Um, the new TikTok is the golden link with Caleb, but it's not W-I-T-H with, it's just the golden link W Caleb. So just in case you guys want to follow me there, um, I haven't posted any videos yet, but I'll post, I'll post little quick tips and stuff there soon.